Today on Camp Pencil Point, Chef Miker will try to draw his version of the creature that was the fossil from Waddle Cove. And I'm gonna ride the log flume. No one's gonna ride the log flume. Hey, Camp Pencil Pointers. So, despite losing internet last week, it was still very exciting. Ruby found a giant fossil out by Waddle Cove. And she did this sketch of it. This inspired Emily to do her own sketch to try to recreate what this creature may have looked like. You forgot to mention my log flume. <laughs> oh, believe me, Ruby, believe me. I am trying to forget that you're building a log flume. By the way, we need more scotch tape. Um, I, I hope you're not using scotch tape to build a log flume. Um, no? Uh, because scotch tape is not waterproof. stuff that's like scotch tape only waterproof Ah, uh, yeah so we're gonna discuss that log flume later but for now we are going to draw another creature based on your sketch Ruby my camp pencil pointers at home what do you think this prehistoric piece looks like using the shapes in Ruby's sketch let's all draw our own strange and peculiar creature Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, otters and dragons and octopi, welcome to Camp Pencil Point, a place where we draw using nonsense and tomfoolery. We're glad you stopped by tonight, this very evening, to draw something ridiculous with us. Joe Fu here, I'm joined by my good friend right over there, Emily. How's it going, Emily? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And <laughs> as you can see, maybe, I hope, he's a little dark right now. Look right over there. Chef Miker, how you doing? I'm great, Foo. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing great. It's been a while. Just a reminder, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Please also follow Camp Pencil Point on Instagram and Facebook at Camp Pencil Point. While you're at it, share Camp Pencil Point with your family and friends. Share the love of drawing. For the next 12 to 15 minutes, we embark on a journey of the ridiculous. <laughs> let's take a moment, let's prepare our minds. Can we see that? Okay. Let's take all the stress, let's take all the anxiety, let's take all the perfectionism that we have. We're gonna take all that stress, all that anxiety, we're gonna wad it up in this little ball. We're gonna have it right here, right in front of us. And then we're all gonna take a deep breath. <sighs> Hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and now exhale. And as you exhale, take all that stress, take all that anxiety, take all that desire to be perfect. And we're gonna push it out because we don't want it, we don't need it. We're gonna get rid of it for the next 12 to 15 minutes. And now breathe in. And as we breathe in with our clear minds, we're gonna fill it with nothing but the nonsense and the tomfoolery. Thank you, Chef Miker, for breathing. So let's all talk about the gigantic fossil of Waddle Cove. So let me give you a little background on this. Ruby's building a log flume. Yay! I don't approve of this at all. It's uh, it's just on the other side of the lake. It's a nice little in inlet uh, where the water collects. It's nice and calm. There's a high cliff. I'm really worried about the log flume that Ruby is building out there. She just asked for scotch tape. It's not a good sign. But the more important part is while she's building this log flume, she stumbles upon a fossil. And according to Ruby, it is gigantic. So Ruby did a sketch of the fossil, brought it back to us. We got all excited. Emily looked at it and said, I could see this kind of creature in this sketch that Ruby drew. But you could check all that out in the part one of the gigantic fossil of Waddle Cove. Chef Miker, also looked at that shape, he saw something totally, totally different. So he drew his own strange and peculiar creature. So everyone out there, let's let's get right to it. Let's not beat around the fossil. 
<laughs> Let's not beat around the fire. That was an old joke. <laughs> Let's buckle in because the adventure continues. Was that Hogarth? Yeah, Hogarth, Hogarth didn't like my joke. Hi, Hogarth. Let's get right to the drawing. Everyone buckle in because Chef Miker will draw his own strange and peculiar creature based on Ruby's sketch of the fossil <coughs> of Waddle Cove. All right, so here we are, and Chef Miker is starting his drawing. What did you look at in Ruby Sketch, and what did you use to base your drawing off of? What did I? Um, I was in the mood for Muppets. Okay. I, I, for some reason, I was just thinking legs. I think I looked at it the wrong way. My, mine might have been upside down. I'm not sure. Well, that's the thing. I don't think any. I don't know if there's a right side up or a right side down. It looks like the actual shape that Ruby drew in the first place is is in the very beginning of your sketch so I, I feel like just the very top of that creature is is all like the shape that ruby used Go. uh it was a tricky thing to, to to figure this one out so that was yeah all right why what made it tricky uh just yeah i i don't know i had no idea what i was doing all right i was trying to make it adorable i hope it's adorable <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the environment uh waddle cove uh basically is is just off the lake it's an inlet where the water kind of comes in it's really calm there's a bit of a cliff emily when we talk about the creature that you drew last week uh what how did you think of environment and and stuff when oh. when creating your creature i drew it in a desert with a cactus just to show its size but okay. <laughs> i imagine water i guess it was it was found near water, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the the yeah, it's it's yeah. right next to Ruby's log flume, yeah. so there's water there. So maybe like the long bird legs would help it, you know, like you know, like a, a crane. That's what I thought too, like it, dealing with the water. And I feel like with Chef Miker's drawing right now, not only could that the long legs be effective in the water, like to climb out of the water onto the land, kind of like a crane, but also like the the cove is down so to, to climb up the cliff this creature looks like it could just like take a big step up onto the cliff and pull their whole body up so tell us right now chef Miker, what what is going on with this this head uh well i i thought okay what is going on with that oh yeah i thought that the eyes were in that chef Miker, did you draw this spots there so and uh <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, you don't remember <laughs> I'm sorry, keep going. Um, yeah, what is going on there? Yeah, I, I don't know. For some reason, I thought that the eyes were on the sides. It sort of felt like a spider, uh, but then I okay. was like, oh, I don't really want to make a spider. I believe what my what Chef Miker's doing is stream of conscious drawing. As it goes down, it goes down. Which is good, because that's kind of yeah. what Camp Pencil Point's all about. Heather, it, chimed, well, yes, in said, Heather chimed in and said, good camouflage and seaweed. Hmm. Okay. There we go. I, yeah, I really don't know what was going on with this. Yeah, I really just kind of... <laughs> I just kind of let go and just... All right, well, let's... Let the pens do their work. That's what we do at Camp Pencil Point. We just let it go. We just draw and draw for fun. As I was looking at the extreme colors, I was thinking of either parrots or like some bugs yes. are extreme colors to make things think they're poisonous. Yes. But I didn't think of that point, Emily, where you said maybe it's it's the brightly colored it's usually mean it, it, there's there's a lot of poison. I was not thinking poison. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of poisonous things are not huge, right? Mm -hmm. Like they don't need to be poisonous because they could just smash something. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> right. I, I want to give it a hug. So even though it's like this what? gigantic creature that's taller than a tree and his head's in the clouds, it looks very light to me. Do you get that quality, uh, that feeling, Emily? I can get that, yeah. Like, Maybe his head's so bright, too, so other birds don't run into it when it's so far <laughs> up. Oh? I was thinking, too, I don't know if he's going to be green all the way down. But if he is in the water, things on the red spectrum, when they go further in the water, they do not show up because of the way the light hits them. So his head could kind of be invisible if he's deep oh, enough wow. in the water. Really? So he could maybe camouflage in the water, deep water. It makes you wonder if he's like a, a prey or predator, too. Hmm. Like there's a lot of techniques and a lot of tricks this car this creature can do to attract prey. Is that I thought he just wanted warm hugs. Yeah, he still needs to eat. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Rita said, uh, "There's nothing for this. Because that's why this guy is a fossil because he tried to live off of warm hugs. Wasn't nourishing enough, and now he's a fossil." 
All right, we got about six minutes left in the drawing. We got to do a little rapid fire. So Camp Pennsylvania is at home. I'm going to ask Chef Mike are the same questions I asked Emily last week. He's going to come up with the quickest answer he can. But let's see. You ready, Chef Mike? -er? Rapid fire. We're going to do it. Question one. What prehistoric beast would make the best pet? A shoe. All right. The prehistoric shoe. Question two. What is the best name for a prehistoric beast pet? Lulu. Lulu, the best name for a prehistoric beast pet. That's pretty good. Okay, next question. What is the worst name for a prehistoric beast? Keith. Keith? And I apologize to the Keith sound. What modern food would a prehistoric beast like most? Tropical Skittles. Tropical Skittles? Tropical Skittles is a good one. What modern food would a prehistoric beast like least? Moldy bread. Moldy bread. <laughs> What kind of modern animal would be the perfect buddy for a prehistor prehistoric beast pet? You a know, blue like jay. A blue jay? I, okay. Your prehistoric beast pet. Uh, are you going to dress it up in an ugly holiday sweater or a Halloween costume? Halloween costume. Halloween costume. What would the Halloween costume be, Chef Micker? A skyscraper. Skyscraper. These answers are very Chef Micker-ish. If you're gonna teach your prehistoric beast a silly pet trick, what would that be? I would teach him to sneeze. <laughs> what sound is your prehistoric beast least likely to make? <laughs> oh, we got a sheep. There we go. A little rapid, a little different from Emily's answers. Obviously, a very Chef Mikerish session. But here we go with a little beauty shot. Uh, there's Chef Micer's character. We're gonna come back to us in a moment. Hey, here we are. How you doing, everyone? Uh, Rita said, "Great colors, lots of depth." That, uh, yeah, you know, it was a, it was a very stream of conscious drawing, apparently, with Micer, which which uh, you know doesn't surprise me one bit. Uh, it was very cool to see your your drawing. Uh, Actually, right next to Emily's drawing, looking at this fossil, looking at the shape that Ruby drew and where you both took it and how you interpreted it and how you use that shape to build two very, just very different creatures. And even though you both used feathers, there are two very different looking uses of feathers. So very, very cool. Hey, if you guys are watching the regular version of this episode and you want to see Chef Micker's drawing at regular speed in its entirety, then follow and like Camp Pencil Point on Facebook. We will go live every Tuesday with a live stream and we would love it if you joined in on the conversation and the fun. If you are a good artist, then keep being a good artist. If you're a not so good artist, then be a not so good artist. Whatever you are, just go out and draw and have fun. You are important and your artistic voice is important too. So whatever you do, please take care of yourself and take care of your artistic voice because we really need it right now. Remember to draw every day, but to take the stress out. Drawing every day is a chore, but when you take that chore out, when you take the stress out, when you take, when you just draw for fun, just like what, just like what Chef Miker did, and draw a stream of conscious and make a strange and peculiar creature that he doesn't even remember <laughs> drawing, or he doesn't remember why he drew certain things the way he did. You know, that's just kind of what we do here at Campus Point. Let the ideas come out. Let the ideas flow. Don't draw for perfection. Draw for fun. You. And it's easy to draw every day if you take out that stress, you take out that perfection, and you just draw for fun. So draw every day, but take the stress out and draw for fun. And never stop creating and never stop inspiring. Until next time, everyone, go out and draw something ridiculous. Take care, everyone. I'm gonna let him out of the room. <laughs> All right, Hogarth All right. is getting escorted out. He's sneezing too. Oh no. He's got those allergies, springtime allergies. All right, see you, Hogarth. <laughs>